New York, 1987, balls are hosted at the houses of Labasia and Extravaganza, a place of safety, respect and expression for the gay and transgender youth often so marginalised by the wider world. Here it is free to participate in a vibrant form of liberation. Drag queens, gay men, lesbians and transgender youth are all equal here, where they can participate in a wide selection of competitive categories that intend to be as inclusive to a variety of skill sets, a variety of beauties, and to the versatility of personalities found within the queer community. As many LGBTQ plus teens are disowned and made homeless for simply coming out to their family, left vulnerable and emotionally distraught due to simply being who they are, these drag queen houses, hosted by the highly respected and saintly drag queen mothers, offer a sanctuary. This is a community aiming to mend, support and love its fallen children. This is Jenny Livingston's iconic queer documentary Paris is Burning, a great documentary filled with personality aiming to educate a mainstream audience on the intricacies of queer drag culture. Paris is Burning has also informed so much of present day pop culture, from incredibly popular television programs such as the Emmy Award winning shows Pose and RuPaul's Drag Race, to music, present day queer linguistics and even the fashion world. The old school New York drag queen culture expressed a radical sense of creativity that can be seen in the works of Alexander McQueen to Donatella Versace. Paris is Burning captures this community, painting its portrait so tenderly and enthusiastically. The documentary serves as a marker, reminding the viewer of where so much of our current pop culture originates from. Paris is Burning teaches the viewer on drag queen terminology, voguing, to vogue is to dance like one is posing on the cover of the Vogue magazine, and as a dance form it is used to battle against potential competition. Reading, to read is to observe somebody's flaw and emphasise it for laughs. Shade, to throw shade, somewhat similar to reading, but often is tinged with a much slyer critical edge, sometimes not even intended to make people laugh. These terms were well established within the drag scene of the 1980s, but Paris is Burning brought their appeal to the wider world, as they are now recognised as commonplace colloquialisms. Paris is Burning's focus on characters from the LGBTQ plus community in New York can be joyous. The drag mothers, the leaders of the drag houses, the pillars of the queer community, are portrayed as generous, sweet-natured, supportive and loving. They wish to give the world to the children of their houses if they could afford it. This kindness demonstrates how this community is based on respect. With very little, they attempt to give as much as they can. The liberation on offer in Paris's Burning is powerful. For example, a competitive category for performance during a ball is executive realness. The challenge is to dress up so authentically like an executive, like a successful business person. One of the drag queens interviewed in the documentary expresses that it's a difficult world for young gay and black people to progress in, and that the executive category during a drag ball gives a sense of fulfilment. You may not be a real executive, but if you feel like one then you feel worthy. The category intends to encourage the self-love and self-respect that each person deserves. Paris is Burning also aims to demonstrate the toxicity of prejudice. One of the competitive categories during a drag ball encourages its participants to dress and act like heterosexuals, that to the untrained eye they will behave like straight people. In a world so filled with heteronormativity, where heterosexuality is free and covered in most of the media representation, many LGBTQ plus people feel the need to hide their true selves, to fit in, and to avoid the viciousness of prejudice. Unfortunately, this fear is justified, as even in the present day, homophobia and transphobia is still widespread. Poland is establishing anti-LGBTQ plus zones, which encourages the endangering of queer lives, and in Chechnya, gay people are abducted, tortured, and murdered for being themselves. Sexuality and identity is not a choice, and with such irrational hatred still brewing within the present day, it is unfortunately understandable why many LGBTQ plus people are afraid to come out to those closest to them, and why they may aim to pass as heterosexuals. Paris is Burning doesn't shy away from the disowning of queer youth. Two young gay teens are interviewed on the street, the youngest being only 13. When asked about their parents, the teenager simply suggests that his mother and father are gone, which implies that the teenager may have been forced out of the family home, forced into homelessness. It's an uncomfortable truth, but many queer youths are still forced into homelessness due to being disowned by their own family. When Venus Extravaganza is introduced, Paris is Burning is providing one of the most significant examples of transgender representation. She wishes to have sexual reassignment surgery and live her life as a woman. A later sequel
sequence in Paris is Burning depicts two trans women at the beach, one who is joyous over the success of her sexual reassignment surgery, as she suggests she is free as the wind. She is now at peace as she has become the self she always viewed herself as. It's an empowering moment that deserves embracing. The self-love this woman exudes after everything she has likely endured is beautiful. From this perspective, we, as viewers, can understand the importance of transitioning for people. Unfortunately, Venus Extravaganza's tale is less joyous. She moved away to New York to avoid causing her family, as she suggests, embarrassment. In New York, she is accepted into the House of Extravaganza and became the house mother's right-hand woman. A kind soul, her main source of income was as a sex worker until she temporarily gave it up, fearful of the AIDS pandemic and the violence she experienced from aggressive clients. One client murdered Venus due to being transgender. This is a very realistic threat that many transgender people are faced with, violence due to somebody discovering they are trans. It's a terrifying reality to be faced with, but it is a reality. As human beings, most LGBTQ plus people wish to live peacefully as their true selves, to live openly and comfortably. Venus didn't have that freedom, and with her death providing the conclusion to Paris' burning, the documentary provides a realisation that with unity LGBTQ plus people can achieve what they need to live peacefully, to be treated equally, to stand against violence, prejudice and discriminatory laws which restrict LGBTQ plus human rights. In conclusion, Jenny Livingston's Paris is Burning is an iconic LGBTQ plus documentary focusing on the New York drag scene, its sense of inclusivity and how it provides a sanctuary away from hatred. The drag houses are suggested to be like gay street gangs and voguing is suggested to be like street fighting. Using such creative, liberating and empowering methods to settle potential differences is a beautiful approach to living. A drag queen named Willie Ninja suggests that one day they'd love to see drag become mainstream, for drag queens to become models, singers, dancers, entertainers, for mainstream success to be attainable for this once niche queer community. With the assistance of Paris is Burning, this is no longer a dreamy fantasy, but a brilliantly, beautifully queer reality. Thank you.